do you have to end it right there? Oh, it's getting worse and worse. These cliffhangers, these cliffhangers. I hate cliffhangers so much, especially when an anime is this fucking badass. So, I, I knew the ending was gonna end like this the entire episode. I had those vibes. As soon as I saw June Cats get on freaking Ruko, I knew Sink Cats was gonna be worn by Satsuki. So, I, I was just, I was like, yes, I knew it. And then the freaking choir music just raised it higher and higher and higher with that badass just theme song. Holy crap, the music in this, the new theme songs they used. Along with the just awesome epic animation. I don't know if it was just me, but the animation just did a complete freaking 180. Like, as soon as we got to the ship scene, the animation just went beautiful. I mean, the budget clearly went into that entire ending scene. Oh my god. Trigger, you're a master of cliffhangers, suspension. I, mean, I want the next episode. I want the next episode right this second. This episode was so awesome. It captured so many emotions that I want in an anime. Now, one thing. This episode was just so awesome. For, uh, just not from just, you know, the epic fights, but to the freaking, like, toenail cutting up freaking life fiber uniforms to freaking awesome DTR Robo freaking uh, Sugamoog fighting Ruko, Ruko going insane, being controlled by her life fiber actual June cats, just all around. Th these episodes, man, I, I, I cannot believe how great Kill a Kill is. And usually people ride hype trains and stuff. People have said that a lot about Kill a Kill, Sora Line, Madoka Magica, all sorts of different anime. But this ain't a hype train. I've seen enough anime to see if it's garbage or not, but the level of epicness in this series, I see so much Gurren Logan in this episode. The entire ship scene, when you see the ship get revealed, and you just see it pop out, naked sun, and then just... The way it was introduced, I was like, this is Gurren Logan all over again. Freaking Ruko with her freaking robe around her, not wearing any clothes, kind of reminded me completely of Simon. I just, they did so many different kind of ways to reference Gurren Logan that it was not even funny. And what else makes this series so fucking epic that I haven't even managed to cover in my all my other reviews is that they managed to implement comedy sequences, like for instance, the DTR Robo, what we saw Sugamoog actually riding and fighting in, at the same time, even though it's funny and comedy-wise, they keep the level of badassness at an all-time high almost the entire episode with either the choir music to the epic electronic music to the actual freaking one-liners that make you do, oh my god. So, another badass episode of Kill a Kill. Uh, this anime is just so amazing. This series is going to be one of those series I look at my actual milestone corner marker of my anime history and say, if it's not to so-and-so par with Kill a Kill, it may not be badass. This is the level of epicness I have been waiting for in an anime for a very long time. This, it's not just the part of everybody hyping on it and made by the same creators of Gurren Logan and Trigger Studios. It's mainly on the fact of the way they're telling this story, the way they manage to do plot drops with the actual climaxes of the different arcs, along with the likable characters, the conclusions of character development. It's just it's so amazing. Like, for instance, you make likable villains. Like, Nui, for instance. I, it was already go figure. Nui was already a life fiber to begin with. Like, she had life fibers inside of her. But when you see her, her heart just get ripped out. When I saw freaking Ruko just stab her straight up, I was like, oh my god, she finally got revenge. And then you see her, Nui just back and it's like, oh, just kidding. And you see blood all over and all that. And then her heart pops out as she pulls it out. I was like, oh my god. She literally pulls out her own damn heart. And literally shows it to Ruka. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> so, wow. And just, that's not even to begin the epicness of this. I've, I'm going to say epic a lot in this anime review just because of what it has done to me. I cannot believe an anime can do this to me. It's not, it just gets my emotions so freaking riled up. I, oh, this anime is one of the series I will say is a must watch for anybody that loves battle anime. If you have not seen Kill a Kill, if someone out there right in this world right now is watching this review and you have for some reason not seen this epic fucking series, start it now. End this video and start it now. Kill a Kill is definitely one of those series that will be remembered for such a long time and I know for a fact I will never forget what this series does to me each fucking episode. 
I, I love Attack on Titan, okay? But Attack on Titan didn't even get me this much emotional freaking epicness each episode like Kill a Kill is doing. So, what I can conclude on this actual anime review of Kill a Kill episode 20 was that it was one of the most badass fucking build-up episodes of its series. And one of the best badass build-ups I've ever seen in anime, period, because of what it has done with its characters. I feel like there's a lot of foreshadowing we have seen through the course of this entire series since episode 1 up to this point, and there's been a lot of death flags raised a lot recently. I want to get into a fact, I've been reading a lot of theories recently, and there's different things that were very interesting. People were saying, I don't want it, people were saying that Mako is going to die. Now, th this ain't spoilers, don't worry about that, but there's so many theories, death flags, conclusions that actually prove this hypothesis that make it possible that Mako is going to die very, very soon. If she is one of my favorite characters, if she was to die, I would probably have emotional tears to it because of how much I love the comedy relief Mako gives. So I wanted to pull this out. There's been so many actual death flags in not just this episode, but other episodes that I think I should talk about it. And all of you right now, they're probably my longtime actual watchers of my reviews. You probably know where I got this theory from. And I don't want to spoil it and the reasons why, because I don't want to ruin the epicness of what most likely will happen. Anyways, I just want to get that out there. That is what I've been hearing going along around a lot recently, and hopefully that does not happen because people were saying that most likely Nui had was part life fibers, or she was completely doll made by life fibers, and we find out that she was made by the life fibers womb this episode. So I was like, okay, they guessed that properly. So I feel like all these different theories that are popping up might prove to be true. So I hope it's not. For once in my entire anime watching life, I don't know, being an otaku, I hope. I hope we don't have an emotional death very soon because I love this series. Anyways, this is going to be the end of my anime review of Kill a Kill this week. Tell me your thoughts on it. Did you enjoy the level of epicness in this series? Rate your epic level from 1 to 9,000. Let me know right now. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live, and I love all of you. I really probably want to go watch this episode right, right now, right again. Chibi out.